So, hi, hello everyone again. Hi, Micro Hunter here. So, hope everything is fine. I hope that uh, the sound works again as uh, we all hope to be able to understand each other properly. Um, so, at least I hope that you're able to hear me properly. So, if there are any uh, sound problems, please uh, write this in the comments. Um, yeah, today I'd like uh, to talk a little bit about uh, microscopy as a hobby. Microscopy as a hobby and uh, some of the advantages, the cool things, and some of the difficulties uh, that there might be um, as well. And uh, traditionally, um, we've always started off a stream, um, yeah, by... Uh, maybe you can tell us from where you are <laughs> in the pre... Yeah, uh, because it's al always quite interesting uh, to have people from all around the globe. And uh, yes, everything seems to work. We already have a hello from Serbia. Uh -huh. Hello, and uh, maybe if uh, there are other people from around the world, Netherlands here, yeah, it's uh, always nice to have such a nice international community here, all united uh, by a common hobby, a microscopy. Okay, Norway, Lebanon, ah, Honolulu, Hawaii, Germany, okay, Netherlands. So cool, uh, really nice. Um, I uh, called, I uh, decided to call uh, today's. Um, um, video live stream the good the bad and the ugly and then later on I added uh, yeah and maybe also the funny because the very first comment here is actually quite a quite a good one <laughs> um, yeah uh, from uh, Mike B hi uh, there is nothing ugly about microscopy as a hobby um, there are difficulties okay but it's not ugly and uh, of course I agree with you uh, but simply uh, the saying good, bad, and ugly is very common. But what I would like to do today is I do want to talk a little bit about microscopy as a hobby, of course. And um, while I talk, I also want to show you a couple of microscope slides um, in the background. Okay? Yep. So Netherlands, Norway, London. Very nice. Um, of course, uh, we have a little community, microscopy community here. So if you want to share your own experiences a little bit, uh, then please uh, do feel free to post this in the comments section. Um, usually it's like this that um, it uh, after the end of uh, the live stream, which is going to last approximately one hour, um, it will take some time for the live stream to also become visible um, as a YouTube video. And after a few hours, then the comments will also start uh, to appear. Um, the, yeah the chat comments and then you can also post comments um, on the bottom. Well, um, what I would like to do today is the following. I would like to, um, yeah, uh, I've made a little list here um, about all of the advantages and disadvantages that I found uh, with microscopy. And the reason why I would like to do this is because um, um, I do receive uh, quite a few emails uh, from people who want to start microscopy um, and uh, who are encountering difficulties. Um, some people who are not quite sure whether they should um, start microscopy and then there are of course also more experienced uh, people already who also um, want to further their hobby but uh, sometimes encountering some problems um, and there has been already a um, slightly um, yeah again a, a question about uh, microscope buying advice and uh, even if um, I will try to attempt to answer the questions even if they go a little bit off topic okay um, it does relate a little bit here um, the right at the beginning of the chat this is I'm a my, mycologist. Uh, this is uh, someone who studies fungi. Okay, a mycologist looking to get a, a microscope for microscopy. Would you recommend the Swift Stellar One Pro? I just want a high quality scope that's not pricey but willing to uh, spend about 500 to 1500. Well, I guess dollars or euros. Um, generally, um, what I would say is the following there is a little bit of a distinction on whether you want to use the microscope uh, also for professionally I know it's a little difficult thing here because of the trans it's kind of a, a gray zone but I would say is if you're spending a long long time behind the microscope okay many hours a day I think that is maybe the criterion really really then I would actually spend more on, on a higher quality microscope um, and I would also uh, spend uh, more uh, because uh, some microscope companies do offer also service and have an easier access to replacement parts. And um, that is essentially one of the criteria um, as well. Um, so if you are a mycologist and if you study fungi and if you intend to sit behind the microscope for many hours, uh, then this is already a little bit more than 
under quotation marks now, okay, only a hobby because uh, if we're doing it as a hobby, we might not be spending many, many, many hours behind the microscope because we have our daily job to do as well. Then maybe in the evening, we're going to sit maybe behind the microscope a little bit. Um, so I would say that is a, a little bit the criterion here. And uh, especially if you also buy a uh, slightly of a, a brand microscope, uh, then sometimes uh, they also come with complete imaging solutions. And with imaging solutions, I mean, um, a proper a camera adapter that uh, works well um, because uh, with some uh, yeah, other less known brands the microscopes might be quite okay um, like for example the Swift Stellar One Pro I've got one of those and I think it's a pretty a pretty decent microscope as such but um, yeah I had problems getting a, a decent camera adapter and I had to 3D print one myself uh, one at least that works yeah, properly and the commercial camera adapters that can be bought from other companies primarily, well, they did not produce the same image quality that I was hoping for. Um, and if you buy now more expensive brand microscopes, you're not only paying more for the microscope itself, but also a little bit for the whole ecosystem behind it. Okay, so um, the, the, the infrastructure of servicing and, and they might actually offer you a complete imaging solution. And especially if you have specific research needs, um, and that is also one distinguishing criterion between hobby microscopy and maybe it's something where you go more into research. You ask yourself is, do you need phase contrast, for example, to see certain structures when you want to identify the fungi? Now, I don't know that, um, but um, if there are indeed certain research questions that you specifically want to answer, then you have to yeah, adapt the microscope uh, to your needs. And this is a little bit different for a hobby microscopy, for which we talk about here, where we can be a little bit more flexible, okay? And where uh, maybe there aren't, the demands might not be quite, uh, um, quite as strict, okay? So, uh, wow, um, I'm receiving a lot of comments here. Um, I always will go through the comments as well because I do not want to ignore anyone. Okay, from Ohio, from Texas, from the UK, hello. Um, how to turn this hobby into a micro uh, stream of income? That's uh, something I can also talk about. Um, good morning. Okay, uh, also just one question I want to ask this week, how to know if my microscope uh, has a 160 objectives? There are only magnification aperture values. Is it, it's a one, oh, 1975 scope, can't find info on Google. I think here it's a, um, quite easy to answer. Back in 1975, um, there were either, either 160 or I think 100, some microscopes had a 170 millimeters um, of uh, um, yeah, um, of, a, of a mechanical tube length because infinity microscopes uh, came later, okay? Um, otherwise, I don't know. Um, it, there are, it depends on the brand of the microscope um, and then you have to look it up what type, of, what type of system they actually had. But the infinity microscopes, they came out, I think, uh, around 1990, uh, 2000s around, okay? I want to start microscopy, but I'm uh, saving up my parents are not accepting, asking me, what it is used so I can say to me that the reason I do not want to know but to convince my parents, okay. Um, what I will do is the following. I'll quickly read them first to get an overview of the questions and then I will answer them. That makes sense. I'm moving towards doing it professionally and I don't mind saving up for a bit longer. Um, okay, that's uh, the response uh, about uh, mycology. I look into the CX23. Um, yeah, I, will, I was recommending the Olympus CX23 um, also as, um, again, I'm not affiliated with Olympus or any company. I just want to make this clear. Um, but um, of the brand microscopes, um, the, the, yeah, the, the CX23 seems to be one of the more, um, of the cheaper ones. Okay, I've, I've actually got a, um, here, um, the desk view over here. There is a, is a catalog here. And what you always have to ask yourself is, is do you want to have a microscope with a phototube or not? So generally, I would always recommend a microscope with a phototube, which significantly pushes up the price. Um, but uh, the CX-23 with only three objectives, okay, was around a thousand euros. So it's, it is, they are more expensive. There's no question about this, okay? Uh, but at least you also get a little bit the infrastructure, and especially if you move a little bit into um, doing this uh, professionally, then you actually might appreciate a little bit um, yeah, if you have uh, some kind of a, um, yeah, um, a service in, in, in the background, okay? Yeah, this here, by the way, is the head of a fly, okay? Um, which it also wants to, so I'm just going to, while I talk, put a little bit of <laughs> some microscope slides in the background, okay? Um, uh, what to look at things I cannot see in my aquariums. I never f uh, feed fry, but they are eating something. Uh -huh. Is it silly to think of making my own stem microscope, okay? Perhaps I could find parts online. 
uh, Colombia, okay. Well, yeah, um, so let, let me go through the, the questions here first, okay? Um, the, the, what has been the question is, is, um, is it possible to my, make microscopy as a, um, yeah, some kind of, um, to earn money with microscopy? Um, honestly, I don't know, uh, really. Um, the question is always a more fundamental one, is, is what problem do you have, what problem can you solve with microscopy that other people have? Um, that is the most fundamental question. Is is uh, by the way, these are little, uh, yeah, uh, these are Cyclops and Daphne, a little, um, yeah, water fleas as well. And uh, yeah, okay, here we go. Okay, and uh, this is a little bit the, the question is um, if you want to um, use microscopy as um, um, yeah, for business, then you need a certain kind of market, okay? Well, I'll be honest with you, I earn a little bit of money um, over the affiliate links that I post uh, beneath the YouTube videos, but this is very far away from actually <laughs> earning myself a living. I just can use the money a little bit to uh, maintain uh, the hobby and to maintain the YouTube channel and to buy a few things that I can present to you and show you. Um, uh, so um, I think uh, um, if you want to actually uh, f turn microscopy um, uh, into a, a, a business, then you have to see it as a business. And then, I don't know, maybe microscope maintenance, uh, uh, buying and selling and refurbishing of microscopes, uh, that would actually be, uh, be, be a thing because uh, then you have essentially, um, yeah, people there that are willing maybe to buy used microscopes and you can be the one that actually can provide them. Um, uh, just by observing things under the microscope, I don't know um, if there is a market for this, um, but I could imagine that it might be more, e I mean, maybe some people, I know that for example, uh, buying and selling used microscope slides from the Victorian age, they're collector's items and pretty expensive. So I'm quite sure that there's a possibility to find a niche, but you always have to ask yourself, if you want to turn something into a, um, into a business, a hobby into a business, then ask yourself a little bit of uh, yeah, what need you're fulfilling, okay? Um, but um, let me quickly finish some of those uh, questions here and then I would like to, uh, to talk about a few things here, okay? Um, and I don't saving up more. I've talked about this, yeah. There has been the question about how can you convince your parents? Um, um, where, where was this question again? Somebody wanted to buy a microscope, but the parents were kind of against it. Okay, where, where, where is this a little bit here? Uh, outside of field. Uh, let me see. Well, I, I kind of missed this again. Yeah. Okay, um, what I'll do is the following. Um, for those of you who are new into microscopy, um, many years ago, about 20 or 30 years ago, and still, I'm still interested, um, I was quite a bit into, um, um, into amateur astronomy, okay? Um, so I did some stargazing, actually quite, uh, quite intensively for, for some time. And uh, when looking um, at the stars, um, I was actually, you know, see, I'm not a problem finding it, um, I was, I was comparing a little bit. How is the hobby of stargazing, of amateur astronomy, similar or different um, to, to microscopy? And there are some interesting differences and some interesting similarities. By the way, this here is a mite, a so-called a varroa mite, uh, which is a parasite of bees and is a pretty big problem for beehives. Okay, just uh, wanted to show this to you as well. Okay, so this is a mite. Um, and... Uh, Basically, what, one of the nice things about uh, microscopy is, is that uh, you can do the hobby relatively easily at home um, and pretty much at any time of the day. Um, when I did um, amateur astronomy, I had to, of course, wait until it's dark and then sometimes the weather was not quite fine. Um, so it, there was a little bit more dependency on the weather. Um, so this was a disadvantage, but a huge advantage in amateur astronomy was that there was a huge... Uh, community and uh, not only online communities um, and not only uh, magazines that you could buy or websites but uh, there were uh, in, in the town where I was living there were regular meetings um, of the local um, astronomical society they had a telescope there that you could actually go to free um, yeah, star watching tours so you, they invited uh, people um, to look through the micros uh, <laughs> the telescope so there was a, a, a really a, a very vibrant uh, and pretty large in community and pretty large interest 
And uh, the downside a little bit uh, and uh, with uh, microscopy is, is that um, at least I found it more difficult uh, to find actual physical microscopy clubs in the area. So the only way that you could actually network was uh, virtually online um, over the internet. Um, so like star parties existed uh, quite uh, frequently with amateur astronomers and, and these things did not really exist uh, so much with uh, uh, with microscopy and I think that is something that we as mic hobby microscopists can also maybe try to change so I've been thinking um, there are many <clears throat> resources already available for example I'm a teacher in school schools have sometimes uh, labs biology labs equipped with, with microscopes so my suggestion would be is, is that uh, maybe we can open this up somehow um, um, and uh, maybe also um, yeah kind of uh, get the interest of the general community a little bit more but maybe using already the res resources that are already available so i encourage universities and schools that have microscopes uh, available maybe to open up a little bit uh, to get the general public more involved like kind of outreach programs you know? so um, this is already done within schools of course when biology teachers use their microscopes to uh, yeah, get the students interested but maybe we can expand this a little bit um, as well to get the community a little bit larger okay um, so this is a little bit of uh, some of the things that I uh, um, saw a little bit um, that um, microscopy might uh, benefit a little bit okay um, okay um, so any ideas how you can use a microscope outside in the field um, yeah this is also something uh, when we want uh, so-called field microscopes um, I recommend then that you buy yourself if you really want to have a uh, take the microscope out into the field and not take the sample to uh, back home then I recommend that you really buy yourself an introductory microscope um, these are very small portable actually children's microscopes um, and um, they are battery operated and uh, they don't cost a lot uh, around a hundred dollars euros 110 maybe um, and uh, they're quite small um, and uh, yeah if they break or if they become damaged then you have not lost much okay um, as a matter of fact I'm using those introductory microscopes as well um, to take along on holidays yeah if I simply want to observe a few things if I want to take a picture to document something I simply take the picture through the IPC using my mobile phone yeah but I would say portability and independence of electricity is important I want to start microscopy but I'm saving up my parent I'm saving up my parents are not accepting it asking me what it is used so I can can you say to me the reason I do not want it okay so basically that's the one um, you want to convince your parents uh, and you're saving something uh, difficult um, I mean um, I will tell you the following sooner or later everyone I mean I'm a teacher right um, and uh, sooner or later every student every child will be an adult and will go his or her own way and sooner or later if you are interested in it then um, essentially then um, uh, yeah you'll pick up the hobby anyway but I think maybe the parents are a little bit skeptical because they're kind of worried that uh, you spend your money on something that you're not going to keep on using I've got two children and uh, of course when they want to spend some we also question I also question it okay um, are you really sure about this um, have you really thought about this um, and uh, so I think it's not really convincing the parents that uh, you um, what you're able to see uh, but maybe convincing your parents that you're serious about the whole thing okay um, and uh, I think uh, then the parents uh, will be yeah much more accepting because what parents don't like is is uh, when um, yeah money is spent on some on something that is then simply not used and yeah was basically then wasted yeah so could binoculars be adapted to be used as a stereo microscope I don't think so no I think the, the that's uh, the, that is not uh, what you, you'd have to yeah, I don't think that this might be easily possible and the reason is is because the objectives are simply too large and this uh, means that there is a huge uh, um, yeah the the depth of field is much lower then yeah I wanted to get a telescope but the ones I was looking for were huge yeah uh, the reason why telescopes are so huge is, is because telescopes are primarily not there to magnify but they're primarily there to collect light and the larger the diameter of the lens um, of the objective or of the main mirror is the more light is able to collect yeah? and that's why they're so huge yeah um, what does SP mean written in, on an objective I don't know this now because it depends sometimes uh, uh, SP could mean spring loaded 
Um, um, and so I'm going to show this to you, but I'm not quite sure. It depends a little bit on the manufacturer. So if you look here at the desk here again, this is an objective and uh, it could be that it, yeah, if you press this in here, okay, yeah, then this is called spring loading. But I did hear about SP and, uh, but I forgot honestly, yeah, um, it depends a little bit on, on the manufacturer as well. I'm looking forward to buying uh, some petri dishes and wanted to know is there any way to buy some cheaper to, uh, to Serbia? It's too expensive. Are there any way to buy agar or cheap common? Okay, so basically you want to grow your own bacteria. Okay, uh, I'm not always happy about this uh, because uh, if you grow bacteria um, at home, then you are actually um, in an elevated biosafety hazard category because un if you're growing unknown bacteria, then um, the problem is, is that... Um, yeah, some of them might be dangerous. And for this reason, I'm not, a, yeah, I don't encourage that you do that. Okay. Um, but essentially, uh, agar, agar, I mean, if uh, can be bought, uh, is used also in cooking. Um, it's not quite as pure. It is not laboratory grade, but uh, it is readily available as well. Yeah. So this is a tick, which I prepared some time ago. Yeah. <laughs> Just also wanted to show you a few of these. Yeah. Would you choose the Olympus CX23 without a trinocular port over a Chinese made uh, trinocular with other functions? So that's a little bit the question. Uh -huh. uh, look, there is no, no true answer to this. Uh, so should I buy a cheap one with more functions or a better brand one with uh, fewer functions or, or features? Uh, I don't know. Uh, because uh, the, um, it depends uh, quite a little bit also on personal preference, um, especially when you're doing something as a hobby um, and uh, for personal interest, then a lot depends on how much you like using the microscope. And there is also this issue about emotional attachment to device. It's not only rational. So I'm, I, I would not be able to say that. Um, generally, what I always recommend is, is um, maybe at the beginning not to spend too much money and then later on think about uh, investing more money so that you can make a better choice yourself. I mean, um, this is, it's probably better maybe at the beginning to buy a relatively cheap, low cost one. You gain your first experience uh, with this microscope. Um, and then uh, later on, as you gain more experience, you will know better what you actually want and whether you're going to be happy or not. So if you kind of uh, go through the whole process with all of the cons and uh, pros and cons, then I think um, it might be easier for you to make a decision. But I know the, the opinions go apart so much um, that um, I, I would be very scared of actually giving a recommendation here, okay? Um, yeah, um, I think I can find Petri dishes in Serbia. Well, I, 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 I know that you can buy Petri dishes in Serbia because they're used in, a, in a, pretty much every microbiology laboratory, yeah? I know you can even buy them over Amazon, yeah? Is there any way to get uh, pre-filled Petri dishes the laboratories usually make them themselves. They even have, they have uh, some hospitals and labs. They have their own department that make them. And yes, you can also buy them over Amazon. Yeah. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm not um, encouraging that you grow your own bacteria. Yeah. Um, are there any fountain pen inks that could be used in staining specimens? I have used fountain pen inks, uh, just the regular fountain pen inks. I mean, the German one, it's a Pelican 4001, it's called. I've used quite successfully, okay? Um, so I would say this too is a question of trial and error and not all, not all inks work equally well on all specimens. Yeah? Okay, um, hi from the US. Have you ever tried our genius stereoscopic modification for compound microscopes? No, I have not and I would like to know what this is. Ah, this lets you see 3D in a compound microscope using just, ah, I think I've heard about this. Uh, this would be interesting, okay? I think the way that this works is even though there's only one objective, uh, but especially the low power. Um, so basically, can you use, uh, watch something stereoscopically even though you only have one objective? And the thing is, is at low power, because the objective is fairly large, if you look something through the left and the right eye, you do see it slightly from different angles. And somehow using uh, polarizing filters, by, you can actually block out uh, one, yeah, you can get different light paths. And I've heard about this, but I but I didn't know how it is called, but now I know the name and I'm going to research this a little bit because it sounds interesting, yeah? Okay. So uh, then, um, can we expect a future DNA extraction tutorial? Yes, I'm working on it, okay? Um, I'm really trying to figure out what's the best option for, uh, for scoping a mycelium and spores uh, for extended amounts of time, okay? 
if you wanna if you wanna take pictures uh, and you probably want to, then you go have to go trinocular and first of all find out do you need phase contrast for for uh, looking at spores. If you need phase contrast, then this automatically limits um, the choice of microscope significantly. Okay, yeah. Um, the decision of buying a microscope has been a struggle. That's actually also one of the things that I would like to talk about. Um, so you know what I'm going to do because I want to, I do want to cover a few points here as well. Um, so I'm, I've, I've actually prepared here a, a list um, of, um, of items, of topics that I would like to mention, some of the advantages and disadvantages. And then I also want to show you a couple of uh, other things here. Yeah, you can do a microscopy at home. Um, you don't need a lot of time, um, so basically you just pull out your microscope and you do the hobby. So there is not a lot of time needed to travel anywhere. Um, yeah, you can take it along. Yeah, that's what we I've also talked about already. So if you have gone travels or if you want to, um, yeah, um, go out into the field, weather independent. One of the nice things about microscopy um, is is that there is a possibility of specialization. So if you have a certain field of interest, like for example studying fungi, then you can specialize. That's also something where you can become an expert. You can uh, teach yourself the basics of microscopy. That's also an advantage. The costs are not too high. Um, generally, microscopes can be bought. Well, actually, introductory microscopes can already be bought, bought for around hundred dollars or euros, and one hundred ten maybe. Um, and then you can always upgrade later on. And uh, you're independent, so um, this was I find this also to be pretty much of an advantage uh, because um, you do not, uh, yeah, need other people around. It's nice to have uh, clubs and associations, but you do not depend on them, okay? And especially if you're in a rural area or, yeah, it, this can be a significant um, advantage. Uh, why am I going through this, actually? Because um, Christmas is coming and uh, I'm starting to receive more and more emails uh, from parents, grandparents, people who want to actually buy a microscope as a Christmas present. Um, and uh, some people are still uncertain and that's why also one of the reasons why I want to talk about these things here, yeah? Um, yeah, can you say something about your own experience with the use of smartphones taking pictures? Yes, oh my gosh, yes, I can, uh, I can say so much about this. Um, could boron uh, be used to preserve specimens? I don't know um, whether... Uh, normally what you do is to preserve specimens, there are uh, special so, uh, solvents that you already use. And so I don't know... Uh, and these are documented ways of how specimens can be and should be prepared. Um, so uh, it could be that uh, it's possible maybe, but maybe um, it's not commonly used or maybe there are some disadvantages to it. So if you want to actually prepare specimens or preserve them, I recommend that you do a little bit of online research and use those uh, solutions or solvents um, that are uh, documented because uh, there's long-term experience with those. Yeah. Um, okay. There are many, so many options. Yep. Formalin, yeah. Um, what uh, what phase contrast trinocular would you recommend? Because I think that's something that can enhance. Well, if you want to go phase contrast, um, then you, then those brand microscopes that are like Olympus, Zeiss, Nikon, uh, Leica, they offer phase contrast, and you have to contact the company directly. Now there are also uh, lower cost uh, companies uh, that manufacture uh, microscopes, um, but um, they are, I would say, the big companies in this case are more established. Phase contrast is already going a little specific. Yeah? So if you're already willing to spend so much money for actually going phase contrast, I would actually um, go a little bit uh, yeah, to the more established, uh, well-known companies. Okay. Um, so then there are uh, microscope filters for the SW150, 110. Yeah, so those um, basically those introductory microscopes that who, which do not have a condenser you're kind of limited with filters okay uh, that's the thing um, those introductory microscopes are really not designed to accept a lot of filters um, and therefore um, yeah maybe polarization you can try out but dark field and Reinberg is generally not possible with those introductory microscopes it doesn't matter um, there are plenty of things that you can observe anyway okay but I was skipping over a few of the questions here smartphones um, so, um, and that is one of the bad things, not the bad, the disadvantages, okay? Um, and one of the problems that I've, uh, I would say one of the biggest problems of, um, of uh, amateur hobby microscopy is, is that I feel that the 
question of how can you connect a camera to a microscope so that you get de a decent quality is not yet fully satisfactory for the lower end microscopes. I need to explain this. Um, many people or some people would like to connect a DSLR camera to a, a microscope that's a single length reflex camera uh, because uh, they have a large sensor, they have a very good signal to noise ratio, you can do video with those, but you need a, an adapter. Okay, and this is where uh, we're talking about the bad aspects of microscopy or the not the bad aspects, the, the disadvantages. And um, then you can get yourself a, a, an adapter like this here. Okay, I, I bought this uh, directly um, over AliExpress. And uh, you basically plug it in into the trinocular tube and then over here you have a camera. And it doesn't work. Why does it not work? because the distances don't match there is a uh, I made a separate video even on this uh, in this channel yeah um, you see that there's a diaphragm here wow I said isn't this cool you can even now reduce the internal reflections but it didn't work okay I, I don't know it was just uh, mechanically it looks very nice nicely made uh, but um, the distances don't match I was not able to get a clear picture with this yeah um, so this is a problem um, and uh, what I've found also that sometimes the optics of those, uh, those, uh, those adapters are not particularly good. So I've used one of those adapters which did work um, on my stereo microscope but the image was extremely blurry because the optics introduced uh, lens errors and aberrations. And here I found actually that the image produced with a mobile phone um, over the eyepiece was actually much better interestingly than having an adapter connected to a DSLR camera that's a paradox yeah um, so yeah this is uh, one of the things where I just say that uh, um, it depends a lot on the configuration if you have a, a, an adapter which is um, ideally no adapter at, at all, no optics at all where the objective directly projects it on into the sensor uh, this would be the ideal solution um, but this is sometimes not offered and I had to actually 3d print one of those so you see this is one of the disadvantages that uh, there is not for the low-cost microscopes at least there is not a well-rounded complete solution now you can of course uh, connect uh, that dedicated microscope cameras uh, to uh, um, yeah to, to a computer just a second so I got here I got here a microscope camera yeah that uh, and uh, those microscope cameras uh, they need to be connected over USB and they do work but they have another disadvantage and that is is that uh, those microscope cameras are not very good in uh, uh, making videos um, so you see over here that's the, that's the camera and there is also the, the optics that you have to um, uh, connect here and then this goes into the, the, the photo tube because the USB connection is too slow to get high resolution video. Yeah. So you see um, everything is a little bit of a, of a compromise and I would say that's one of the things where um, I kind of hope that microscope companies are going to um, uh, get a, so, yeah, a solution <laughs> for this. I mean um, I've, I've been asked about the Swift, uh, the Stellar One Pro for, for studying fungi. Um, as such it's a good microscope but I had problems uh, connecting um, a decent camera to it because it's not because the microscope the problem but uh, the, the camera adapters were not good yeah and uh, so I had to 3d print one myself and the higher end uh, manufacturers um, where you get really expensive microscopes they already have a complete solution uh, basically out of the box and it, it's gonna work yeah? uh, so this is a little bit of a, a, a disadvantage here okay um, so I'm going to go back again to the, to, to the, uh, to the questions here. Yeah. Um, yeah. What phase contrast? I talked about this, um, about the filters. Okay. Um, you don't mind saving the cheapest way to make source of polarized light sunglasses. Perhaps if you want to make it, uh, make polarized light microscopy, you get yourself over Amazon very cheaply. Um, uh, polarized uh, polarization filters. You don't, uh, sunglasses um, are too expensive, okay? Um, and they're kind of bent, and you want to have very thin uh, polarization films. So they're kind of like you know, flexible plastic sheets that look gray. You can buy them directly over Amazon, okay? Um, so I wanted to ask last week, I read that some rotifers are 
you tell like they have fixed number of cells with which they come out of the egg. How did, who did they, how did they count the cells? Okay, um, so basically uh, there are certain micro animals also for example uh, tardigrades uh, who have a fixed number of cells. For example humans don't have a fixed number of cells. Different humans have a different number. Okay, um, and um, one of the things that uh, um, some animals have is, is that they have a fixed number of cells and the question is now how do you count them? Um, I would probably s will say that maybe it's not even necessary to count them but what you can do, I mean, is you can um, probably, I'm guessing right now, uh, by doing a certain PCR determine the total amount of DNA which is present. And uh, by determining the total amount of DNA and if different uh, members of the same species have the same amount of DNA, then you can probably conclude that they have the same number of body cells. This would be now my speculation of how this could be done. Okay. Um, yeah, we're, okay. Okay. Um, yeah. I have to, yeah, somebody has to go. Thought Sprite doesn't matter. Uh, see you again. I say it doesn't matter because this video will be online so you are able to, to watch it later as well. Okay, would Infinity Objectives uh, solve the camera attachment problem? Not automatically. Um, the thing is the following that um, Infinity Objectives also have, uh, the microscope has to have a so-called so tube lens and this tube lens will project an image. And uh, somehow this image has to go into uh, the sensor and whether this is via a tube lens or directly from the microscope objective doesn't really matter. Yeah. So um, I would say that this per se does not uh, make a huge difference. Okay. Um, are the differences between the Swift 350 and 380 significant? Um, I mean, there is a little difference, okay, the 380 does have slightly, uh, slightly better optics, okay, um, but I would not say that uh, the differences are very huge, okay. Would you say that DIC is worth the expense? DIC is differential interference contrast, and here again, honestly, um, DIC is significantly more expensive, okay, um, and um, the question is now, is, is it worth it? And uh, this is um, also something that only um, a person can individually decide. And I would say once you get yourself an offer for a DIC microscope, um, I think this will already answer the problem or the question for you because they're so expensive that you probably, <laughs> most people will probably say um, it's out of question. So my suggestion is, is uh, to... Uh, simply uh, maybe try oblique illumination which gives you a similar which gives you a similar um, appearance as DIC okay and oblique illumination can be done quite uh, quite cheaply by the way this is uh, what is what does it say here um, I have problems reading this and ah, it's a sunflower stem cross section okay um, so this is some, something that I want to mention so yeah um, some of the so disadvantages um, um, yeah, the microscope purchase, that's one of the problems. Beginners may, might have problems uh, choosing the right equipment. That's a, a big hurdle. Um, however, I would uh, say um, some people might overthink it a little bit. Okay, it's uh, microscopes generally, um, even though there are, seem to be so many different types out there, there are not really because uh, the features are not so different from each other. Okay. A big issue, especially for um, beginners and children, is, is I would say that um, especially um, microscopic specimens that you see over here, like this cross-section of a stem, can be too abstract. Um, so sometimes the images are not quite relatable. And with that I mean that uh, people look at it and they're kind of wondering, okay, uh -huh, that's how a sunflower looks like under the microscope, but in reality what do I really see here? Um, and they are not able to um, de yeah, see the significance um, of the whole thing because you need biological background knowledge, right? And uh, this is a little bit of a, um, of a problem that uh, some people ha have, okay? It's kind of funny because I just realized for whatever reason my condenser is a little bit stuck and I don't know why something is blocking the condenser. <laughs> isn't, this, isn't this strange? Yeah? You see the condenser which I can swing out doesn't uh-huh, ah, that's the reason it got a, one of the, see, do you see this? One of the screws got a little bit loose. I have to, have to tighten it and now we go, here we go again. Okay, <laughs> yeah, um, 
Now I lost myself a little bit. Yeah. So one of the problems is, okay. See, do you actually see this? It's not quite, not quite centered. Here we go. Ah, uh-huh. Okay, that's an interesting one, but, but that's an that's interesting demonstration effect. For whatever reason, I'm not able to raise my condenser all the way again because it bumps against the slide. What in the world happened here? I think I must have detached somehow something here. Just a second. This is really sick. I've got the microscope now several years, but this is the first time this actually has ever happened. Let me see. See, I, I can take out the, the whole uh, condenser system and maybe one of the screws got loose. Now it's tight and it is not centered. This is really strange. This is a little bit uh, interesting because I'm not able to raise it all the way. It's kind of bumps against something and I don't know why this is doing that. It's still not entirely tight. This is really interesting. <laughs> wow, fascinating. Okay, I, I think I uh, must have gotten it somehow out of alignment because I'm able to center the condenser. And I think as for by playing around here a little bit, I've gotten it somehow out of alignment. And I don't know why, uh, but I'll try to figure this out. Okay, let me put it back again, the slide. Here I have to see this one I can also it's also loose and the reason is because there's some screws in the background back here which I can tighten and uh, then yeah everything is centered again okay oh, I'm a little bit uh, uh, fascinated by this <laughs> why uh, look this is really cool never had this before and actually, I don't want to try to figure this out, but maybe I'm going to tell you later on why this uh, actually didn't, uh, why I got this out of alignment. Fascinating. Just let me, give me, give me a second. I'll, I'll try to figure this out. Okay. Um, what's the best age to start using a microscope with children? Uh, not too young. Okay. If you want to have a microscope, uh, use microscopes with children, get yourself a stereo microscope. Okay. Uh, because stereo microscopes uh, do have uh, the advantage that they give an upright image and uh, the upright image um, allows the children to, uh, yeah, to actually interact better with uh, the microscope. Okay. Um, so, and generally there is the saying that it does not make a lot of sense to give a, a microscope to children that are significantly younger than let's say around eight years of age because they don't have the, um, uh, the, the, um, how call the, the, the manual dexterity to operate the focusing knobs and so on. Yeah. So it's a little bit of question also how much the parents uh, get involved. Okay. Kefir cultures um, uh, of our bacteria and fungi, what method would I use to observe the colony? Um, I did make a video about uh, kefir um, in my other channel. So I recommend that you please visit that and have a look at this. Um, it is possible to observe kefir. Okay. Why don't children like microscopes generally? They prefer video games, perhaps because patience is needed. Yes, this is a very good point that I've also been asking myself. Why is it that um, microscopes generally yeah, video games are so pre preferred um, above other things. And one of the reasons is, is that video games give immediate feedback. Okay. Um, this, the kids do something and there's immediate an immediate response. Microscopes do not um, give an immediate response. Um, that means the only way that I can interact with a microscope is by moving the slide around. Then I'm able to see that changing the magnification, but that's it. Video games, in contrast, uh, they immediately give much more feedback. There's more interactivity in that sense. And for this reason, in order also to understand what the children see, the microscopic images sometimes are quite abstract. So, and for this reason, I think video games sometimes are preferred. And for this reason, especially with children, if you want to get kids involved in microscopy, I highly recommend that uh, the parents get involved. You go out with the, uh, with the child into nature, collect some leaves, put it under the microscope and so on, because children don't have this independence yet, I would say, you know, or some of the children, depends on the age. Yeah. You know? Okay. Um, hello, I have a question. It does exist like an encyclopedia of microorganisms, especially protists. Where can I see every type of ciliates type? 
Yeah, there are of course identification books around, um, um, but um, the thing is, is there are so many of them around. There is not one general. There is not one general book that I would say that I could recommend. Um, I, last time as well, I recommended a book, a German book, uh, which contains a lot of drawings in them, which contains a, a lot of them. But um, yeah, there are so many subgroups um, as well, and I would say that um, yeah. It might not even be necessary all, it depends what you want to do, but it might not be necessary all the time to go all the way into detail. Um, but if you're just able to recognize the general category or the general taxon, um, then sometimes um, it's also enough. But um, there are still still so many discoveries going on, so it depends a little bit on the, uh, on the level of detail that you would like to identify them. Yeah? Um, I want to set up a micropons with different conditions, pH, temperature, concentration of iron. What would you suggest for growth substrate for undetermined organisms, glass or lattice? I don't know what you now mean with lattice exactly. Um, and uh, I can, and I would also say the following. Um, if you want to set up uh, micropons, I mean, it depends. If you want to set up jars, for example, um, you have to understand that every microorganism has different uh, uh, preferences. So it could be that uh, there is not one ideal. Um, yeah, one ideal um, yeah, composition of nutrients. It could be the different, um, even things like uh, like light intensity term can um, or temperature, oxygen concentration. They, they all influence which type of microorganisms can grow. Yeah? So uh, for this reason, um, I, I cannot say uh, try this. But if you have specific organisms that you want to grow, if you say, okay, I want to grow diatoms. Then there are specific recipes available that you have to research, and if you mix them together, then they are optimized for certain microorganisms. Okay. Uh, any recommendations for keeping large samples uh, from ponds from going bad as winter approaches? Lake and ponds algae withers away. I have a problem keeping the sample from getting fungi. Well, um, the thing is the following: you got to keep uh, somehow the nutrient concentration low. Okay. Uh, fungi are heterotrophs, um, and uh, also if uh, stuff starts to decompose, then this is because um, of uh, um, yeah high nutrient concentrations. Often, if they're fertilizers in, in the pond, and algae will grow, then they will decompose, and then uh, bacteria and fungi start to grow. Yeah. So one of the basic things is, is keep the oxygen concentration high and keep the nutrient concentration at, uh, low. Okay. What's the difference between a field condenser and a substage condenser? Okay. Um, actually. Um, I can show this to you a little bit here. Um, um, this here, if I, I turn on the light again, if I just pull, put it down here. This is a, a so-called a Köhler diaphragm. And uh, yeah, and uh, you can actually uh, close this and that's the field diaphragm, okay? And this limits the light only to the part of the specimen that you actually look at. And up here, um, this here is the, um, uh, the, the condenser diaphragm which uh, controls depth of field and contrast. So most microscopes actually have a condenser diaphragm and only the more advanced microscopes actually also have Köhler illumination. Okay. So these are, that's the two, these are the two differences here. Yeah. Um, the problem may be that the lens of the objective is not uh, complete and aligned with the sample and the problem is not the condenser. Uh, the, it is, as a matter of fact, it is aligned and it is in my case indeed the condenser and I have to tell you it's really weird. Yeah, um, I guess it's a little bit, I got this a little bit out of alignment somehow. Ah, now it works. It was completely out of alignment because I have two centering knobs uh, that allow me to center the whole thing um, so that, uh, yeah, the whole thing works. And this was, for, uh, I guess I must have twisted the wrong knob and I'm going to now have a look again. Uh, I'm, I can actually demonstrate this to you now. See, I can actually use the centering knob to center the condenser, and this was completely out of alignment. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, this here is uh, the so-called the field diaphragm. Well, let me show it here. This is the so-called field diaphragm, and you see that yeah, it opens up here. So, okay, I'm, I'm glad that I found the the problem, but yeah, and now I have uh, to find, of course, the specimen again. And the specimen is somewhere gone. Okay, what is this here? Ah, what is this? Yes, so this is actually um, uh, something where uh, where I recently made a video. 
I made a video of this. These are red blood cells. Okay. These are red blood cells. And if you actually zoom in quite a bit here, then you're able to see those uh, purple lines. Uh, these are trypanosomas. These are parasites that cause sleeping sickness. Those purpley squiggly lines. Okay. So I had come across your DSLR camera adapter video. Um, it was of great help. I was inspired a 3D printed one, saved me 300. Yes, uh, I'm happy about that. Um, this is uh, the, I think the video that I made where I uh, 3D printed um, an adapter which allows to directly project, directly project an image uh, into the DSLR camera, okay? Do Daphnia ostracals target great rotifers algae survive freezing? Some yes, some no, glycerol as an antifreeze. Uh, do they survive freezing? Uh, well, actually, I think they must somehow because otherwise they would not be able to grow again next uh, springtime. So they must have some stages that are able to survive. Um, and um, yeah, tardigrades generally are quite uh, cold tolerant. Yeah? Any chance you could post videos on the future about fluorescent microscopy? <laughs> I'm working on it, working on it. Where is this? Uh, look at this. Fluorescent microscopy. I have over here, okay, uh, UV um, LEDs, flashlights. And what I want to do is I want to actually use them for top illumination. Um, and uh, I'm working on, on this a little bit. Um, it is possible to actually make some, uh, some objects fluoresce by using these UV uh, lamps, okay. Um, but um, I also want to make chloroplasts fluoresce. Um, and I'm still working on this um, um, a little bit. Chloroplasts in, in plants, for example. Yeah? But uh, if you, for example, uh, use this light and shine on a dust sample, you're going to see that some fibers actually start to shine. Okay? So you see that uh, yeah. they have different, uh, slightly different wavelengths. Okay? But they're, uh, both of them are um, yeah, UV flashlights. Okay? So yes, um, this is possible. And you just use them and you shine them the light from, from the top. Okay, um, I want to show you some, some uh, uh, things that uh, um, I, <laughs> some weird things, some funny things as, as well. Um, yeah, J just show you over here. I'm going to switch over again to the desk view. I got a microscope and sometimes there are specimens in there. And look at this here. It's in Chinese. <laughs> what in the world? Okay. So I got a microscope and uh, I got some specimens, the slides all labeled in Chinese. Okay. Uh, so <laughs> what are we going to do in this case? Uh, I just want to show, is, uh, I show you what I have done. It's a little bit, it's not, yeah, <laughs> nothing spectacular, but uh, just a second. There is this app called Google Translate, if I can find it. Just a second. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I installed it recently. Uh, here it is. And Google Translate allows you to actually, I have to choose now, I have to choose now Chinese. Chinese, traditional Chinese uh, to English camera. And if you now actually take a picture of this, I don't know if you're able to see this. It will actually tell you what it is. <laughs> it's a cross section of testes. Okay. Yeah. Um, actually, I was quite surprised how well Google actually works here. Okay. So we can do this again with the next slide. It goes always a little bit out of focus. Yeah. Skeletal muscle cross section. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy that uh, this actually does work. And why am I showing this to you? It's because if you uh, get identification books where uh, it's described in a different language, then you can still actually translate the things. Yeah, and I, this is something I do not understand. It says here, honeybee, third pair of thoracic legs. That's fine. Film loading. I do not understand what film loading actually means here. Okay. Um, yeah. Actually, maybe a whole mount. This was could be that a whole mount actually is uh, yeah, translates like this. And here, what about this one over here? 
you see let me let, let, let's move this a little bit over because i'm, I'm covering myself here ah. here that's also uh, yeah a, a, a dicot stem a dicots are those plants that have uh, two first leaves it's a cross section i think this was also quite nicely translated and over here um, the last one And here that's an onion skin again film loading and i don't know what this means yeah um this is a, a yeah it's an app called google translate and um yeah which uh, is free and you can actually take pictures yeah um so this is something that i generally recommend um so it's it's just uh, yeah it's a google lens i just downloaded this um, and uh, if you go to camera then it's able to to directly um, yeah, project the translation over um, over the image. So especially if you, for example, are on holidays and you want to know, know what's uh, the, how the things are translated, then you can use this. But I also recommend this, uh, especially because some identification books that you might find um, contain descriptions in a different language, um, and uh, you still might consider it valuable, and then you can uh, translate it. So I've actually done this uh, quite a few times already. Okay. Um, have you had a chance to see or play with uh, the Oppo cell phone that comes? No, I have not. Okay, that's uh, something that I just, uh, yeah. But uh, there's some, something else I want to show you here. Uh, some of the frustrations of, of a hobby microscopist. I bought myself uh, very cheaply a whole set of five of these light boxes, very cheaply. And uh, because I said I don't need anything expensive, I just want to have uh, some slide boxes. Um, yeah, it, uh, I got this here, and uh, yeah, it was glued in here. I think I bought it over AliExpress or I don't know, it, very cheaply from China. And then I was super happy. Wow, uh, cheap slide boxes for routine use. And then I wanted to put a slide in here, and it wouldn't go in. Yeah, it's it doesn't go in. So I have to actually put it in diagonally. This was super frustrating. Okay, uh, it really, it's, uh, it's uh, the box is too small or the slides are too large. Okay, yeah, uh, this one actually does work. Um, but many of them actually didn't work. And the Chinese slides, interestingly, they fit into the Chinese box. Um, but the other slides that I've, yeah, I've got, yeah, they don't fit for whatever reason. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's not, uh, you have to squeeze it in somehow. Yeah, it, it's, um, yeah, I'm kind of uh, worried that they might break. Uh, yeah, but uh, it's not, I can't get it in. Yeah? <laughs> but uh, it, indeed, if you put them next to each other, you're actually able to see that the, the Chinese slide is, is a half a millimeter or mil, uh, is, yeah, it's a half a millimeter or millimeter shorter. Um, so it's uh, able to fit in here. Um, yeah, so that's uh, simply also something that I just want to tell you, you got to watch out a little bit. And for this reason, um, there is also the, some people, and like I have uh, done as well, I've made my own slide boxes. And what you can use is you can use corrugated cardboard uh, to actually do the sides here. Um, so this is, uh, yeah, um, one of the things. Uh, it's, sad, it's, it's sad that it's not standardized. It could be that it is standardized, but maybe because of the manufacturing process, because the plastic, as it cooled down, maybe got a little bit yeah, bending inwards. Yeah? Therefore, the center part is actually, yeah. even the Chinese one doesn't fit here in the center. Ah, it does. You have to kind of make it fit. Okay, um, but indeed uh, there seems to be a slight difference in, in slide size um, or uh, different manufacturing tolerances. Yeah, um, yeah. This ah is interesting comment. It might be a metric or imperial thing because three inches isn't exactly seventy five millimeter. It's one point five millimeter difference. This could be. That's an interesting one. That could be the case. Yeah, that there were maybe some kind of. Uh, um, yeah, rounding errors that uh, contributed to this. Yeah, but this was actually very annoying. Uh, I have to tell you uh, because, uh, um, yeah, I have, I'm now sitting uh, around with a whole bunch of slide boxes, and I don't know which slide boxes actually work and which ones don't. Okay, but uh, I'm going to put back again the. Uh, let's have, we can have a look at a few of those slides here, um, and um, this is uh, was also um, a question uh, that I got asked. Um, for hobby microscopy, um, what about uh, should, uh, is it better to actually make uh, your own slides or should you use uh, commercially prepared slides? 
And I'm saying, well, um, it's a good idea always to have a set of commercially prepared slides um, at home if you want to show something to someone. Yeah? Um, and, uh, but uh, then again, as you can see here, the quality of the slides, hmm, look, look at all of the dirt, okay? And um, much of this dirt is not on the surface, but is actually inside and yeah, beneath the cover glass. Yeah, but it's okay, I guess, yeah, just to, for showing it. Yeah. Um, I bought the 100 slide box. Uh, it's loose, uh, but all slides fit. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this is actually yeah the the a bee a bee's leg that we have over here. Yeah. And uh, so this is uh, something that I just also wanted to show you. Um, so my recommendation, and I, I would like uh, and, uh, to use this also uh, because I've been talking now um, again an hour, I, ha I have a wish list, so to say, um, um, a, a wish list to microscope companies. And uh, the thing is the following, that if you go online and if you look for microscopes, you're able to find so many different uh, microscope models and uh, this really confuses uh, people sometimes and what people do is, is uh, they will then try to choose uh, the microscope based uh, on the magnification and then I receive emails where people ask me well is I don't know 2000 times magnification enough yeah or should I get one for more and I think no, it's totally irrelevant at that time yeah and so this is my wish to the microscope companies and retailers that they please do not advertise the microscopes uh, by the maximum magnification this is wish number one uh, my second wish uh, to the microscope companies uh, to make the life for hobbyists easier is, uh, is to also provide uh, some service and support. Um, and with that, I do not necessarily mean alone service and support if something doesn't work, but also replacement parts. Uh, so, um, for example, there was the, the, the question with the Swift uh, Stellar One microscope, which is a, quite a good microscope. Some people uh, contacted uh, the company and they were asking, um, is there a re replacement objective? Um, is 60 times objective? And it didn't exist. Okay, or for other microscope models, they wanted to get the LEDs exchanged and there were no replacement LEDs. And uh, this is uh, always something, uh, a problem that the microscope companies, they, they basically get the microscopes directly from the factory, all packaged nicely and everything complete. Uh, but then there is very after sales support and uh, sometimes very few spare parts and upgradability. And this is something that is a second wish that I have is that uh, yeah, there better be, my wish is that there is more support concerning this, okay? Um, and uh, another third wish that I have is, is uh, the big issue that um, many microscope companies uh, provide microscopes with a trinocular phototube, but there is no um, yeah, easy way to actually connect a, a good camera. Sometimes the only way that you can connect the cameras is to use a microscope camera that you have to connect over USB. But this is also not something that everyone wants to have. And it's also yeah, a, a cost issue. So we need um, yeah, low cost adapters. And uh, sometimes those adapters are yeah, actually are nothing more than a tube. They're not even optics necessary. And I kind of do not understand why the company simply do not make that. And all these things uh, make life a little bit difficult and um, this is uh, something where if this were easier, I think there would be a huge market um, for, for hobbyists here. Yeah? Uh, could you recommend a source for amber? Yeah, I don't know. I don't, honestly, I don't know a source for amber uh, because I guess you want to uh, get some amber with inclusions. But I know that there are, um, I would simply Google it because I'm quite sure that there are somewhere online shops that specialize on this. You're selling maybe ambers and uh, maybe even fossils and so on where you can get that. Because amber, I guess uh, you're interested because of the insects that are enclosed here. Yeah. Ah, yeah, of course, here. Looked at amber for fossilized insects. Yeah. So, um, so this is a little bit uh, my, my wish uh, that, I, um, that I have uh, uh, for, for the companies. And uh, I, of course, also hope that. Um, yeah, microscopy um, is uh, also going to thrive in the future and I hope that also yeah, the, the videos like these and, uh, and uh, all the other YouTubers that are starting to make microscopy videos that they all contribute uh, to increasing this fascinating hobby. Uh, any thoughts on the Nikon Eclipse? Um, 
no specific thoughts. I just want to say that uh, Nikon, just like Olympus, Zeiss, Leica is a brand uh, microscope. Um, so I would say there is not much that can go wrong here. If you have any interest in these microscopes, I would actually simply contact the company directly. Yeah. And, uh, and ask for, uh, for a quote for how much it costs and or maybe for a pamphlet. Yeah. Any experience with make an imaging Japanese company product, specifically the camera? No, sorry, no experience. But interesting, it's still good that you're asking because then I can uh, follow up and do a little bit of research. Okay. Most companies don't make 60 times. I have a Labo made uh, yeah, LX400 with plan objectives to 50x costs $400. Yep. That is um, actually also one of the things that um, sometimes uh, the, um, yeah, especially for brand microscopes, uh, they can be quite expensive. Yeah? Attach a bellows uh, to objective, which then is uh, uh, finely adjusted in photograph. Would that work? Um, that's an interesting one. Yes, uh, I think, and this actually already has also been done. Okay, um, so uh, experimentally at least, uh, so it is possible to just uh, to explain this a little bit here. Is it the question is is it possible? Let me change here. Um, is to take an, um, a microscope objective um, and then connect uh, basically some, make something yourself uh, and connect uh, then a camera directly uh, over bellow, bellows. Bellows uh, basically allows you to adjust the distance here. Um, Yes, this uh, should be possible. Um, however, the, I, I think the difficulty here again is, is the whole focusing system, okay? Because this needs uh, very fine uh, mechanics. Uh, but uh, if you have everything set up on a rig or so, I think that might work, yeah? Um, but uh, I would say that probably the easiest and best for low magnifications because for the higher magnifications, you again, for the best uh, image quality, you again need a condenser and all of these things, yeah? But I think with bellows, I've heard that some people have already done that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Look for uh, 63 times if you're willing. Yes, yeah, 63 times. I did it with my 3D printed fluorescence microscope. No additional optics. Ah, okay. Yep. Yep. So that is um, actually a, you know, a possibility. Um, what I've done um, uh, some time ago, <laughs> simply as a proof of concept, I made myself a so-called Lego microscope or constructed the tube um, out of Lego pieces. This also works uh, quite well. Yeah? There's really nothing uh, to it because all you need is a tube of the correct, uh, of the correct size and correct length. Yeah? Okay, um, so this was just some general talk a little bit um, yeah, about uh, microscopy in general. If you are interested in um, starting microscopy, uh, then um, my suggestion is, is maybe not to think too much. To, some people tend to, tend to overthink everything and they want to get everything uh, perfect or, uh, and the best microscope right at the beginning. My suggestion again is, is, is kind of build up a little bit um, and uh, learn as you go along and then keep on upgrading and maybe not to spend too much money right at the beginning. Okay, um, so um, because uh, many different people have different interests in microscopy, different expectations, different quality expectations, it's also important, um, different uh, attitudes and don't forget the saying that the best microscope uh, is the one that you end up using the most often, especially when we are using it for a hobby, as a hobby, then of course uh, we also have a certain personal connection to the device, that's also very important. Um, and uh, I think it is, a, after all, a hobby of learning. So this means that uh, if we build up some knowledge and some skills, then uh, and if we start to specialize, then we are able to make a better decision of what, in which direction we want to go and which microscope is then the best one to buy. But if you already have a specific research interests, like uh, it has been said in observing fungi, for example, then I would actually start to ask the question a little bit differently. Then I would actually say, what is it exactly that I want to see. Do I want to see the spores? Do I need phase contrast for this? What type of magnification do I need? And so on, how long will I be sitting behind the microscope? Will is taking pictures an important thing or not? Um, so there are all of these additional questions. And um, if you have all these specific requirements already, then you're able to also narrow down the, the, the options of microscopes uh, that, you, that you have. If you uh, basically want to get microscopes for children, um, then something that's important is, of course, uh, that it's not too expensive. 
um, and uh, the children need support and especially if uh, they're young children you might want to distinguish is do you want to have a stereo microscope or compound microscope yeah? so there are um, quite a few additional questions that you might have to ask okay so let me quickly go through the um, last couple of comments here are there any general encyclopedias of protests that you recommend okay just a second give me 30 seconds I'll get something I've already recommended this book here uh, last time it is the old edition the problem is is that it looks transparent now because I have to put it down here okay it is in German uh, but again uh, remember with a translate app okay it is the old edition it contains thousands of images okay thousands of images I just don't want to show them to you in too much detail because of copyright issues um, and uh, this basically um, I would say um, is uh, is one of the standard works um, I don't know if it has been already translated to English or not even if it has not been translated it doesn't matter so much because these descriptions are relatively generic anyway um, and if you have a picture and the name of the organism then you can always Google the, and type in the name into Google and then you get more information yeah so this is a uh, yeah uh, uh, this is basically um, one that I can recommend ah and there have already been comments here are there any general yeah I just bought your suggested book Das Leben im Wassertropfen it's a great book thank you for the suggestion yeah um, the new ed edition actually looks it doesn't look green it looks white okay and uh, you can actually also go into Amazon and you can look into the first pages but the first but they, 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 they don't they don't contain the drawings okay so that's a little bit of a pity that the published uh, preview in Amazon it doesn't is not really um, about the main content of the book okay which are all of the drawings which are actually yeah, very informative and which really help you and uh, so far I found pretty much every organism in this book um, or at least if it's not the same species uh, I was at least able to roughly ca categorize it and I was able to find um, at least in which direction it goes yeah so this is definitely a, a highly recommended uh, highly recommended book yeah uh, for those of you who don't speak German the li a life in a drop of water it's uh, it's called um, yeah and uh, but I think there is there are also other books that have the same title but you have to get the one from from those authors here okay and the new edition has a different color I think it looks white yeah so this is really a, a standard uh, work that I can recommend whether or not you can actually understand the German or not uh, because I would say the text is not so important um, the text is very general at least next to the organism and if you want to get it translated use the app uh, which I showed you or simply type in the name of the organism in, into Google and then you, you'll find more information yeah so uh, yeah this is uh, generally a uh, uh, yeah, some some stuff that I just wanted to to share with you uh, was a little bit uh, uh, yeah different than the other streams in the sense that I did not do any sample preparation this time uh, but I hope it was still interesting I wish you all the best I uh, hope to see you again uh, yeah hope to see you again uh, uh, next week um, and uh, yeah a happy microbe hunting as always <laughs> and bye-bye uh,